Now we're going to look at one of the more difficult questions in the National 5 2015 question paper, uh, which is question, let's get it right, it's 9b part 2. It says to determine the height above the water at which the stone was released. Now, um, what we've got is a stone released horizontally, um, so with an initial vertical velocity of zero, and it travels down and hits the water. And we were asked the question earlier, uh, B part one, calculate the vertical velocity, and we found out that that was uh, about 7.8 um, meters per second. Uh, so that's the the final vertical velocity. The initial vertical velocity was zero, the final vertical velocity was uh, 7.8 meters per second. So to answer this question, the height at which it's released, um, typically you could use distances is equal to speed times time. So if we start out with that, uh, we could write in our formula, uh, which is distance is equal to speed um, multiplied by time. Now the thing about this is, um, the distance is the vertical distance, the speed is the vertical speed, but the vertical speed um, is not constant. Um, it starts out at zero and it ends out at uh, 7.8 meters per second. So this speed that we're thinking about right here is not actually um, an instantaneous speed, but it's in fact the average speed. So technically we should really put a little bar above this um, uh, v to give it the equation average speed multiplied by time. So then the question is, well, what is the average speed? Well, if the initial speed was zero and the final speed on hitting the water was 7.8, um, then we can say that the average speed, just wanting to get this right, uh, v bar uh, is equal to the initial speed of zero, oops, plus the final speed of 7.8. Uh, and that's all divided by 2. Uh, and so that would give an average speed of 3.9 uh, meters seconds. And I'm just going to drag this over a little bit so that I can add in the uh, minus 1 for the average speed and also so that I can add in the little bar above here. I'll just put that bar there. So that's average speed is uh, 3.9 times 3.9 meters per second to the minus one. So now we can use the formula very easily. Um, so if we just write distance is equal to average speed, which is 3.9, um, multiplied by time, and the time from above was 0 0.80 seconds. So if we just put in the time times 0 0.80 and put it in the right place. we can find that our distance traveled the height was 3.1 meters. And so there we go, um, problem solved. Quite a difficult problem. You need to think about what's going on um, to, to get it right, especially relating to the fact that the vertical velocity is constantly changing, so you need to determine the average speed. Now there are a couple of alternative methods to this problem, um, and I'd like to just quickly share those with you. So I'll clear the screen. Um, the first one would be to um, draw in a uh, velocity time graph. So I'm just drawing a couple of axes here. And I'm going to add in uh, a line to represent the um, velocities. Um, so in this graph, if we think about it, uh, the ball starts from rest at zero. So we have a speed here of zero, and it reaches a final speed of 7.8 meters per second. So I'm just going to add in those values down here. Um, so if we use our text, we can add in a speed of zero at the bottom, uh, just there, and a speed at the top of 7.8 um, meters per second. I'm not going to put in the, the uh, label or unit. And the time along here uh, was 0 0.80 seconds. So that essentially is a speed time graph. And if we think about what we know about speed time graphs, the area under a speed time graph uh, represents the distance traveled. And so this area would be equal to um, half of the base times the height, so 0 0.80 times the height of 7.8. Um, 
and of course that answer uh, gives us the distance travelled which is uh, 3.1 meters as uh, expected from the previous solution so I just want to think about the, the final possible way of solving this problem which is probably the one that most people wouldn't take um, and it's definitely one of the more complicated methods and that's by thinking just about um, conservation of energy so I've written out uh, a good amount of this formula already just to go through it so we start out with kinetic energy um, and all that kinetic energy been turned into potential energy or the other way around I suppose arguably um, the ball has potential energy and it releases that and it changes into kinetic energy so there's a, a conservation of energy here and if we think about the formulas that go into those two uh, half mv squared and mgh and then we can plug in our numbers and um, you'll notice we don't know the mass of the stone that was thrown however the mass is the same on both sides so it would cancel out and so you've got the half of 7.8 squared is equal to the gravitational field strength times the height and so just to finish off this um, problem then we can say that the height is equal to 3.1 meters so if you did the sum that's what you would get as your answer so again there's another way of solving the same problem so difficult problem worth four marks and hard uh, hard to get all four